Hello, folks. Welcome back to Learn Synthesis with VCV Rack. I'm your host, Dr. Lawrence W. Moore. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the step sequencer. And um, it's something that you could use for a whole variety of things. But um, we're going to look at the basics of it and all of its controls, its inputs, its outputs, and some possibilities of some of the things you can do with it. We'll obviously be revisiting it in the future to do more and more things. But this is our first venture into seeing how the step sequencer works. So I'll keep it fairly simple in this episode. Also, I've been trying to fix the little glitching on the screen when uh, I'm in VCV rack, the top, a little bit of my desktop background flickers through here and there. I've been trying one thing after another, trying to fix that. Um, yeah, I mean, mostly you can still learn from the episodes, and that's why I haven't, uh, you know, taken any down. But it can be a little bit annoying, I'm sure. So I'm working on it. If anyone has any suggestions on how to fix that, please do leave a comment and let me know. I am using OBS on uh, Linux Mint, and it wasn't doing that before. I kind of just started doing it recently and I tried to make changes to go back to the way things were before but I haven't quite been able to fix it so I don't know let me know if you can help thank you and let's get to the episode Okay, so we're going to start with a clean rack here, and we're going to right-click on it and type SEQ. And this is a step sequencer from VCV that we'll be exploring here first. All righty, so in order to kind of employ this, I'm going to load up a couple more things here so that uh, we uh, can actually test it out. So I'm going to open up a VCO. I'm going to open up an ADSR. Search for EG for uh, envelope generator. And um, yeah, we're also going to need an audio output. So there we go. All right. I may add a couple more modules as we progress, but at least we need these to start. Let me set my audio module for my interface. And uh, okay, so what do we have in a step sequencer? Well, first of all, the controls at the top. You see this flashing light here? <clears throat> That's its clock, and it flashes at the speed of the tempo that you set with tempo knob for manual settings. See it's speeding up there. There's also a tempo input here where you can send CV messages to adjust the tempo. And um, there is also a clock input here, so Something else like maybe a MIDI clock to be fed in here from the MIDI to CV uh, module. And then, you know, that way the clock will be um, set to that instead. There's also steps as an input as well as a manual dial here. How many steps do you want to use of the eight that you are given? As you see with the uh, rhythm of the clock these lights light up on the corner of these outlets here as it goes from one step to another this basically allows you to turn it down to go to seven steps six steps five four and so forth so that's how that works um and then there's a reset here i guess the reset can just simply receive a trigger message 
any kind of non-zero message. And when that comes in, basically it'll reset back to step one. It'll go back to the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, another thing is each step has an outlet associated with it. And it has three CB dials associated with it called CV1, 2, and 3. And you can also turn off steps with uh, this button here. When you turn off a step, it doesn't, base, it doesn't really remove it from the pattern. It just makes it empty, basically. Like you saw this step that I just turned off lit up here in order so this would almost be like making a rest in the overall step sequence the placeholder is still there but the step isn't executed or at least its trigger is not executed each step has the three cvs and a trigger which are listed down here cv one two three and here's the trigger when it gets to a step, basically those CV messages will go out for that step based on the settings that you set here. So as it goes to step one, all three, well, all four of these will send out their information. If this is on, the trigger gets sent um, and the three different CV settings that you set here with these dials. And also there's an outlet here. And uh, I'll be kind of explaining the differences between them now. Okay, <clears throat> CV, for example, is a range of values. So, for example, um, I can set CV1. I'll go with the yellow for that. But, and CV1 is the CV1 for all eight steps. It changes as it goes from one step to another. So basically, we'll hook this up to be up here. So it'll control the pitch of our VCO. And um, the other two CVs, it's the same thing. It's a range. Now, our VCO is going to be shaped here, just so it's not like on all the time. We're going to have it shaped by, yeah, and we do need a VCA to do that. So hold on there. It's going to be shaped by the envelope generator. Basically, we can send, for example, a square wave out here into the VCA and then the envelope I'm going to send to the input here to shape it nothing new about any of this and then we could take the audio out from here like that's right i like to do audio in red this is a cv control here this is the one that i need to change if i'm going to color code things i just will do it <laughs> come on there we go okay now our envelope is <clears throat> controlling the amplitude of the vco now, I'm going to speed up the tempo here so we don't have to wait as long for things to get around to CV1. Now, the thing about using the CV knobs here to control pitch, we're not hearing anything at this point, even when it gets to this step. And the reason is because the 12 o'clock position here is basically zero. We need to turn it up from that. And okay, I'm still not hearing anything. Let's see, CV1 for this step at least. Oh, the gate. 
<clears throat> the envelope will not open without a gate signal. Now I have tried using the trigger for that, but trigger is basically a signal to just do something. I'm not sure what it is numerically, perhaps one, something like that. But basically it's not an on off signal like a gate should be. Gates are on off or open and closed to uh, start and stop an envelope. So we have to, we have to hook up. We're going to use this outlet here because I'm going to explain a few things that I discovered when trying this out. Hopefully I'll succeed this time. What the heck? Come on. Why am I, why am I not getting, come on, it disappeared on me again. Ah. Uh. There we go. Let me turn this down. And now what we're hearing really is the pitch that's set here and then it's going down to the next step. So that's why we hear the uh, two pitches at once. I believe that's why it's doing it. Now let's try putting this into our... If we don't have it hooked up at all, every time it reaches that step, we're just getting the natural tone, I guess middle C, 261.63 hertz. Let's try using this inlet here. And then, of course, you need to adjust this. Let's go up. We're basically getting the same result. I think that's because our envelope is carrying over. Depending on the speed of your step sequencer, let's slow it down. No, it's still holding over to the next one. Let's get rid of the release of the envelope. But then it cuts off. Now, for something like this, you don't really need the sustain portion. Just use the attack and decay. So you have the speed at which the sound comes in and the speed at which it fades out, make a quicker attack. There we go. Now let's put this back on V Oct. But once again, if we have it at the 12 o'clock value here, we're not going to hear anything. Or will we? Oh, we do. <laughs> okay. So we do actually hear the pitch here. Let's uh, initialize this. But then we can go lower than that pitch here. So I'm going to correct myself. I remember when I was playing around it for some things, I wasn't hearing things with uh, it set in the 12 o'clock position. But I guess that is not true with pitch. So you can use it to select pitches. Now we're only hearing one step um, because, try as you might, and I'm not going to try um, because I've done it before. You cannot hook up multiple gate signals to the gate here. 
a lot of things a VCV rack allows you to um, connect multiple things to an inlet or an outlet, but this one, it does not. Now let me show you when you have it on trigger, because wouldn't it be nice if this trigger would execute our envelope for each step? That's what you get. The trigger closes it pretty much right away um, because it's not a gate. But I'm going to try something else here. I know what I needed to do in order to get it to work right, but um, I'm going to try something else just in case. Let's connect another thing here. Let's connect this trigger to the re-trigger of the gate. Nope, that doesn't do it. It's trying to re-trigger it, but uh, no, not intended to be used that way. So, you back over there. You there there we go all right so what we're going to do is put in another module here all you do is search for merge and it's right here this can also be used for other things but basically what it is is it's a merge of inputs up to 16 in fact So we're going to connect our gate out from this step to step to in, inlet one there. And then I am going to connect the outlet here to the gate of our envelope. Okay, now we can set up the other steps. And yep, we gotta do each one individually. I'll do four, that'll be enough for a demo here. In fact, what we can do, let's set some pitches here. Let's set this to four steps. Maybe I need to stop it. Here, the run button is for starting and stopping. Maybe I need to stop it before it'll let me set it. Now, if I set it, yeah, four. Let's see. I have one more to go. There we go. We're using a four step sequencer now. Okay, let's stop that for a moment. Now, we have two other CDs per step, and those could be used for a variety of things. One could be used for amplitude. I hear a little tone there. Quiet, but I hear it. Yep, the sustain was not all the way down. Okay. One can be used for amplitude here of our BCA. Ah, 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 ah. I think what we're going to do. Is in 
I'm going to add a few more things as we go. Turn you all the way down. I'm going to get rid of the VCA and use the mixer. Actually, I could have just deleted it and it would have gotten rid of the cables. Let's do the mixer. Okay, so now we can have a. Oh. We can have our gate controlling each channel. We'll take a square out. Oh. I don't know if there's something wrong with my mouse or what, but I am really having trouble today. Okay, inlet one there, audio input. And then we can have CV two. Controlling this channel. So now it'll control the loudness of the note and um, the envelope will still be governing, you know, the whole thing. All right, let's turn it back up. Are we hooked up here? No. Need to hook this up. Okay, one more thing, I guess. Let's see. The audio in here. Oh, we stopped. I did stop the sequence, right? Okay, let's see what's going on here. Audio going in here. Output from the gate controlling this. And the gate's going in here and here. What am I missing? Still are on the right stuff here, or did something knock that out of whack? No, we're on the right stuff. Well, I do have CV2 controlling the loudness of that channel, and it has not been set. There we go. Yeah, this is the one. 12 o'clock position is off, and everything below. Basically because this 12 o'clock position is like zero. Now, how come we're only getting one step? To be honest with you, I haven't tried to do this to control the amplitude before. But I thought it would just work. Now we're getting a little artifact there. So I know that that could be cleared up with the process module, but what worries me is we're not getting other steps.
Well, it's looking like that is not working out. And I have no idea why these other steps, CV2 is not happening. Let's try something else. But I, sh I shouldn't try things that I haven't actually done beforehand. I was trying to be able to use CV to control variations in loudness. Now, it is plugged into the right spot. And for the first step, we are hearing a difference. Can you turn, please? We are hearing differences, so for the first step, it's working. I don't know why the second, third, and fourth steps are not coming out. Let me take this out. Hmm. I'm not hearing the second, third, and fourth steps even without that. What happened to change things? Okay, this is not making sense. I'm going to have to pause the recording until I figure out why. Okay, so I'm unpausing now. I literally had to go back to using the, v using the VCA. I mean, this, you know, audio inlet and this CV inlet is basically like the same here. Same situation, I have no idea why. I have no idea why. Whether here or there. Come on. Only for the first step. Yeah, so I guess we have to use the VCA for some reason. So if we wanted to use the CV once again to control amplitude, don't tell me we'd have to use two VCAs. Well, if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. So that's the envelope. But we can control the loudness by putting another VCA in. All right, I just thought I selected it. A lot of weird stuff happening today. VCA, yeah. That means you. Okay. So our audio is going to go in here first. It'll go out of here, into here. And then we can control our levels with the CVs. Right there.
But yeah, that's weird. Now you only have a half a dial. Let's do quiet loud. Quiet loud, quiet loud. So you only have a half a dial there to work with. Alrighty, but that is another possibility. Turn it off. Um, we have another CV there. We could control a filter with that. Literally, the mixer worked out for, um, you know, velocity control over each note and everything. I have no idea why it's refusing to do additional steps. That doesn't make sense. But, uh, yeah, that, that was weird. Somebody saw something that I did there that was wrong. Please let me know in the comment section. And I'll address it in the next episode or two episodes down the road, depends on how soon we get a response. But uh, yeah, that's bizarre. Okay, so we have a third CV that now we can use to control a filter, for example. Anything that takes CV you can feed these in. Let's do this. Um, cut off. Let's start it up and then put in some settings. It would help if I actually ran the audio through the filter. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to take our audio cable here, put it in the filter, and take a low pass out. Now, we should hear some difference. Now what I'm hearing, even when I turn this up all the way, you can adjust, well actually adjusting this dial wouldn't make a difference because we literally have it controlling, ah, uh, no, 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 this is a cutoff input where you actually have to say how much of an effect it has. Try lower values like now the cutoff is too low for the pitch.
So yeah, you got to set the main dial for the ranges that you set here so that your cutoff doesn't eliminate the sound. Because I have this set to Now, I'm not getting a good range here of pitches because it's real easy to get, you know, too high for my own good. So one thing we can do is use this. That's giving us the same issue. So you can adjust things around. You get the ranges that you want. All right, so you can see some of the possibilities here with the uh, with the step sequencer. Now, tuning it to exact pitches, that would take some time and that would take some effort to do, but um, it is possible. And I've seen, um, actually, here's another thing, this would help. You want to get closer to actual pitches that line up frequency and wise with notes. Let's try using our MIDI input here. We're now volts per octave. Can't drag cables today to save my life. Yeah, all right. And it, and of course it disappears. There we go. So now that will govern the pitch, and we should initialize this. So. Now this isn't triggering gate, the gate that is um, controlling the envelope is here, but I'm going to hold down middle C. I'm going to initialize all these here. So that technically should be middle C. Let's see what kind of intervals we get here. Yeah. I can let go of the key because it's going to keep playing the same note. But control and mouse allows you to, control dragging allows you to get a little more accuracy.
Okay, so pretty cool stuff. You can actually tune those to get some notes if you want to actually have it be within the um within our tuning system. Okay, so anyway, I think that's a good intro to the step sequencer. And I thank you for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment. It helps these videos get viewed. Um, yeah, and next time, I'm not sure exactly what topic I'm going to do. I did have a request from Frank of covering something. Um, and I think I'm going to include that in next time. But that's not enough for a whole episode. So I'm going to see what I can do for our next episode. But until then, take care and stay free.